Yes, I am live now. Welcome once again to another new video. This is Santu Sahu and you are watching Sahu's tutorial. Do join quickly. Good evening everyone. And you are watching Sahu's tutorial English literature. I hope that you are all well. And you all know that I am conducting mock tests for the upcoming Calcutta University PG English literature entrance exam. This is the part 9. Earlier, I have made eight videos where I have, where I have covered okay more than okay more than uh, 300 to 400 questions. Okay, I can't remember exactly actually. So in this video here, I'll be also okay covering. Good evening. I'll be also covering here some questions for the upcoming Calcutta University PG English literature exam. This is as per your request. I have prepared some questions for all of you, and in the upcoming days also I'll be making videos for all of you. So do join quickly. I'll be quickly finishing some questions here. Most of the questions will be on Beowulf as well, the old English literature uh, epic poem. Okay, here is the first question on your screen. Please do answer in the comment box. Okay, good evening. Good evening, Panda. <coughs> okay, so here this is an easy question. Starting with this easy question here, which period is known as the golden age of English literature, the Victorian age, the 18th century? restoration period and the Elizabethan age okay and you should know the times period the time span of various uh, various English literature uh, history of English literature exactly it's Elizabethan age is the right answer hmm. Hmm. and here you see 1558 to 1603 is, is the right answer exactly uh, yeah, the Elizabethan age is the, that is from 1558 to 1603 so easy one Elizabethan is the right answer exactly Dipti okay so have you taken your admission Dipti? Hmm. Yeah, Sneha, got it. Who was a statesman but awarded Nobel Prize in Literature? And tomorrow also I'll be conducting. Yeah, 1558 to 1603 is the Elizabethan age. Okay. 1558 to 1603 is actually 1603. This is the time span, the time period of Elizabethan age. Okay. Who was a statesman but awarded Nobel Prize in Literature here? Joseph Stalin, Richard Nixon, Winston Churchill, Frank, uh, uh, Franklin Roosevelt. Okay, you are right actually, Bipro. Why did you delete that? <coughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Statesmen but awarded Nobel Prize. Here, yeah, the right answer is exactly. Yeah, Goro, you are right actually. Uh, it's Winston Churchill uh, who got a Nobel Prize in 1953 okay britain's prime minister britain's prime minister okay britain's pm okay good evening sujit so winston churchill is the right answer and tomorrow also i'll be conducting for the upcoming calcutta university exam okay let me prepare some ppt's today only uh, tomorrow in the morning session i'll be also conducting for cut uh, for calcutta university okay 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 no issue, no issue, no issue, Dipti. Okay, if you even taken, uh, if you are doing any uh, from uh, from any state university, that is not a fact actually. Okay, yeah, don't worry about that. So here, Sir Winston Churchill, Britain's Prime Minister during the Second World War, was awarded the Nobel Prize in literature 1953. Okay, he was a statesman, the author of the On the Sublime, Horace Pope, Longinus, and Johnson. Here, uh, apart from th these things, okay, the thing that you need to know that on the sublime is actually written in epistolary format okay it is an epistolary written in epistolary format epistolary okay epistolary format okay remember that is on the sublime by everybody knows who is the author here but you should know that on the sublime is actually written in the epistolary format okay in the epistolary format uh, yeah yeah don't worry okay yeah It's long Jainas, Cassius long Jainas. <coughs> actually, my health is not good enough okay, actually to conduct classes. But instead of that, okay, I also trying to uh, provide some questions for all of you. <coughs> so here, uh, epistolary uh, format mein likha gaya tha on the sublime by Cassius long Jainas. Here, on the sublime is both a treatise on aesthetics 
as well as a work of literary criticism. It is written in an epistolary form and the final part possibly dealing with the public speaking has been lost as well. The treatise is dedicated to Posthumus Tentidius, a cultured Roman and public figure though little else is known of him. Okay. The word tragic flow. Okay. Uh, means. Okay. I have analyzed some, uh, some previous uh, <coughs> The word tragic flaw means actually to err or fail, to contemplate, to postpone or to avoid. Here, tragic flaw is you one, do answer here. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Guru. Definitely I'll be taking care of my health yeah exactly exactly yeah x yeah yeah so here the tragic flaw means actually to err or to fail that is actually to err or fail is the right answer okay easy one easy one an apology for poetry was a reply to stephen gerson's philip sydney william shakespeare and samuel johnson and tomorrow i hope that i will be conducting classes for california university in the morning session so in the morning definitely i will be conducting a session please <coughs> stay tuned in the morning i will be conducting a session for california university okay i have analyzed the uh, syllabus of california university so based on that syllabus i will be making questions okay so that's why i am requesting you to join in the morning session as well Okay, all the questions will be based on the syllabus of Calcutta University. Yeah, exactly. It's Stephen Gerson, the school of abuse here. An apology for poetry. Now, my question is that in which year an apology for poetry was published? Everybody write actually here. The question is that in which year an apology for poetry by Philip Sidney uh, was written? It was published. So, yes, Stephen Gerson's the school of abuse. The school of abuse. Okay. The school of abuse he has written and here was a reply to an apology for poetry was in reply to Stephen Gerson the school of abuse. So it was written in 1595. 1595. And what is the other title of an apology for poetry? Write it down in the comment box. What is the other title? What is the other title of what is the other title of an apology for poetry? Okay. A defense of poesy. What is the other title? of an apology for poetry and here Stephen Gerson was saying that poetry is the mother of lies okay here uh, Philip Sidney is defending so apology for poetry was published in 1595 what is the other title of an apology for poetry a defense of poesy poesy it's not poetry poesy poetry is by Shelley a defense of poetry is by Shelley whereas a defense of poesy is by is by Philip Sidney remember that who of the following was both a poet as well as a painter okay was he kids dan blake and spencer who of the following was a poet or a painter okay as well as an engraver okay an illustrator engraver illustrator engraver illustrator a visionary poet okay engraver illustrator a visionary poet here Talking about whom? Talking about exactly hmm. contrary states of soul. Contrary states of soul here. Tiger and lamb. Here Blake. Exactly. Bipro and Godot here Blake. Poet and painter. It's Blake actually. Hmm. Excellent. Next question. Who is called the poet of beauty here? Okay. I did it now actually in the previous session we have done this poet of beauty here in the previous session we have done this question uh, because he actually yeah got it sneha uh, yeah so you yeah say got it sneha now here is question number seven will you join tomorrow in the morning will you join everybody in the morning session where i'll be conducting for the calcutta university if you tell me if you respond okay definitely i'll be making videos okay so i Hope that I hope that you will be joining in the morning session as well. Okay. Yeah. It's John Kids exactly. Yeah. It is John Kids actually poet of beauty. Uh, because he was not a philosopher, he was not moralizing anything. 
he was not moralizing anything uh, whatever is coming he is trying to put his emotions okay into poetry hmm. okay. yeah definitely so here it's john kids is the right answer okay okay Rep, thank you thank you for your yeah hmm. Uthering Heights here, who wrote the book actually? Uh, Charlotte Bronte, Annie Bronte, Emily Bronte and William Butler, it's okay. So I'll be analyzing the, uh, the slavers of Calcutta University and definitely I'll be making on that. Making videos based on those syllabus. Okay. Uthering Heights, the work by? Everybody knows here, very easy questions, very easy questions, Emily Bronte. Okay. Now tell me Agnes Gray. Who is a who is a writer of Agnes Gray? The novel here Agnes Gray. Exactly, it's it's not a uh, yeah. It's Emily Bronte. Okay, Emily Bronte has written Emily Bronte has written Uthering Heights. Hmm. 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 Now Charlotte Bronte has written the three sisters. They are the three sisters Jane Eyre. Okay. Whereas Annie Bronte has written hmm. Annie Bronte has written Anne Bronte has written Agnes Gray. Okay, Agnes Gray, whereas uh, Emily Bronte has written Uthering Heights. Exactly, and Bronte, and Bronte has written Agnes Gray. So here the right answer is actually Emily Bronte. Chalo. Next question, Jane Eyre by Charlotte introduced, by Charlotte Bronte introduced in, in which year? Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte introduced in which year? 50, 1848, 1849, 1847. And, my, and, and you tell me in which year? In which year pre raphaelite movement was started? pre raphaelite movement was started. In which year? Started in which year? Chalo. pre raphaelite movement was started in which year? <coughs> pre raphaelite movement. <coughs> no, no, no. It's not 1848. It's not so. Before, before, one year before. Pre-Raphaelite movement, okay. One year before Pre-Raphaelite movement. So here, 1847 is the answer. Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre introduced in 1847, and Pre-Raphaelite movement was started in 1848, okay. 1848, exactly. Pre uh, 1848 Pre-Raphaelite movement, and before one year of Pre-Raphaelite movement in 1847, here Jane Eyre was Jane Eyre was actually introduced. The Dynasty by Hardy is an epic drama, a poem, a novel. None of these here. Hmm, got it. So here, uh, question number ten is on your screen. The dynasty is actually by Har dynasty by Hardy is an epic drama, a poem, a novel. None of these. Those who have not joined the Telegram channel. I request you to join the telegram channel and you will be updated regarding the classes yeah 1848 got it sujit uh, here the dynasty is actually by hardy's work this is an actually an epic drama okay it's not a poem it's a novel it's an actually epic drama excellent sneha it's an epic drama dynasty by hardy is actually an epic drama so a is the right answer absolutely right which romantic poets belong to the lake group Lake school of poetry, lake group here. Lake school of poetry, or is also known as lake school of poetry. Lake school of poetry here. S C A stands for Sadi, C stands for Coldridge, and always there is Samuel uh, Coldridge. Okay, and that is uh, yeah, that is Wordsworth. Okay, lake school of poetry. A stands for Sadi, C stands for Coldridge, and you have always here. Exactly. Hmm. So here, uh, what's what? Sam Whitler Coldridge and Robert Sadi. Hmm. Here, Lake School of Poetry or Lake Group. 11A is the right answer. A poem mourning someone's death is known as a fable. Exactly. Got it. Orko, got it. Hmm. An elegy, an epic. None of these. Okay. Have you all finished the 1000 MCQ series that I had? Match for CUT exam for CUT PG exam. Those who are watching, I request you if you are appearing for the Calcutta University PG English Literature Entrance exam, 
I request you visit the playlist and complete the all videos that I had made for the previous year CUTPG exam. Okay, so there, yeah, thank you, thank you. So, complete that 1000 MCQ series that will definitely boost your confidence to appear for any exam. Here it's LEG, exactly. One more left, uh, yeah, excellent. And LEG is the right answer, okay. All good poetry is uh, it's spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. Who made this statement? Easy one, okay. Fantastic, Sujit. Yeah, definitely. All good poetry, everyone easy. Here, X. So this line appeared in William Wordsworth. This line appeared in in which work? This lines appeared in which in which work? Now tell me. Yeah, William Wordsworth is the right answer. Poetry is a spontaneous overflow of overflow of powerful feelings. Now you tell me this line appears in which work of William Wordsworth? Write it down in the comment box. Which work? Yeah, preface to lyrical ballads. Okay. When was preface added? Lyrical ballads was published in 1798. Preface was published in 1800. Exactly. Poetic diction was added in 1802. Okay. Lyrical ballads was published in 1798. Preface was added. In 1800, whereas poetic diction second edition came in 1802. Sorry, admit seven first it was 1708 and uh, 1798, then 1800, then 1802. Hmm. Okay, so first it was 1798, then 1800, then 1802. Okay, preface was added in 1800. Poetic diction was added in 1802. A lyrical ballads appeared in 1798. Hmm. Okay. Which is the popular and most reading uh, reading elegy written by Selling? Got it, Priyanka? Chalo. In memoriam, Lucidas. Then Thyresis Adonis. Okay, here I will be covering all the energies. Okay. Written by Sally. Written by Sally. Yeah. Here exactly 14D is the right answer. Here Adonis is Ad Adonis is actually Adonis actually written by Sally on the death of on the death of kids. Okay. On the death of kids on the date of kids okay and here thyrus is actually written by matthew arnold exactly matthew arnold has written matthew arnold has written thyrus okay on the death of arthur hugh club arthur arthur hugh club okay that is actually on the death of Arthur Hugh Club, Matthew Arnold has written and Lysidas is actually written by Milton, Milton, hmm. exactly, Milton has written in exactly, exactly got it, Suji then Godot, Milton has written the work Lysidas, which is a pastoral elegy on the death of Edward King, its friend Edward King, okay, Edward King, got it and it's actually a pastoral elegy. It is a pastoral elegy. Okay. And in memoriam is actually by 
by whom Arthur Henry uh, by by Tennyson on Arthur Henry Hallam A H H by Tennyson. Next question: Which is the first tragedy written by uh, written in English written in English King Lear, Gorboduc, Hamlet, Edward the Second? What the these options are very hilarious. Okay, here having the subtitle Ferex and Forex. Okay, Ferex and Forex. And here for the first time here uh, it was also written in uh, uh, blank verse. Also, it was also written in blank verse. Blank verse. Okay. So, Gurmudak, Ferex and Forex is the subtitle of this work and it was also written in blank verse. Remember that Thomas Norton and Sagwell has written Thomas Norton, Thomas Norton, exactly, exactly Norton and Sagbile. Okay. Sagbile, they have written this work Gorbodak, Ferex and Porex, written in blank verse. Very easy question. Kids Endymion is actually is dedicated to Lee Hunt, Milton, Shakespeare, Thomas Chatterton. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Kids Endymion is actually dedicated to uh, here Thomas uh, exactly. Hmm. Hmm. It's Thomas Chatterton is the right answer. Hmm. Hmm. All of your idea, right all of your right idea. Thomas Chatterton is the right answer. Who use the terms langu and peril? Langu and peril. Langu is the abstract thing. The abstract thing. Okay. The abstract thing which is not. Uh, which is which cannot be seen it is actually the the actual <coughs> abstract thing the grammar part okay whereas parallel is the concrete thing the actual usage parallel is the concrete thing the actual usage hmm. Ex uh, yeah it's Ferdinand the Sasur in course in general linguistic published in 1916 okay in 1916 work that is course in general linguistics here he has given the concepts of langu and parallel langu is the constructive thing the, the abstract thing and the <coughs> the concept Whereas the actual usage of that concept actually uh, the is a concrete thing actually. Hmm. It's Sasur. Who are the authors of the sound pattern of English? The sound pattern of English. That is dealing with phonology. That is dealing with phonology. That is dealing with phonology. And this work actually was written in collaboration here the sound pattern of english here the right answer is morris hill and chomsky okay noam chomsky and morris hill they have collaboratively written this work the sound pattern of english okay this is actually talking about the phonology the study of sound the study of sound here the sound pattern of English frequently referred to as SPE is a 1968 work on phonology, a branch of linguistics by Noam Chomsky and Maurice Hell. Okay, got it. What is the name of the monster that attacks Hodgar's mid hall? Here, wait. So, you should remember 
that valve is actually a valve is actually an old english or anglo saxon heroic poem and in that uh, valve here the monsters uh, what is the name of the monster that attacks hrothgar medhall king hrothgar hrothgar is actually the king the king hrothgar's hall is known as harrowage here beowulf grindel grindel's mother and dragon got it priyanka so the name of the monster is actually grindel okay and this is actually from beowulf okay the ex uh, well the old anglo saxon old english or anglo saxon epic uh, heroic poetry okay hmm. grindel is the right answer okay in which dialect in which dialect of old english is well primarily written a well the anglo saxon heroic poetry well was primarily written in which dialect Ah. Yeah. Got it, Vipra. Talking about Anglo Saxon poetry. Talking about Anglo Saxon poetry. Goro, talking about Anglo Saxon poetry. Exactly. Okay. No one has answered right actually. No one has no one has right. No one has answered it rightly here. Here it's late West Saxon. Okay. So that nothing to deal with Middle English, nothing to deal with Old Norse. Now the remaining option is actually early West Saxon and late West Saxon. It is late West Saxon. Okay, well, which primarily written in late West Saxon. Okay, what is the total number of alternative lines in the epic poem Beowulf? Twelve. The number of lines in this alternative poem Beowulf. Each. Old Norse the dialect. Old Norse the dialect. Dialect actually. Uh, yeah, it's exactly here. Three thousand one hundred eighty two line. Excellent. So you can space. C is the right answer. Exactly. Hmm. Hmm. Got it. Space. Yeah. Space TV. Go road. So you all of you right here. Who joins Bill in his quest to defeat the dragon? Who had who had shared his helping hand to defeat the dragon? King Hrothgar, Grindel, Wiglaf, Skyld Skipping. But earlier he had a fight with Bill. Even here it's Wiglaf. Okay. Who joins Bill? Here it was Wiglaf. Wiglaf is actually is trying to help. Is trying to help. Uh, no, he had not. That kind of fight with Bill, it was not weak. It was unfart actually. Uh, mm. Yeah, it's weak left. By in the epic parents Bill with the sword hunting, unfart. Okay. Yeah, it's weak left. Weak left is the answer. 
Wiglaf. No, it's Wiglaf is the right answer. In the epic poem, here you see in the epic poem Beowulf, who presents Beowulf with the sword and thing. King Hodgar, Wiglaf, and Faro Grindel. The previous answer of that question number 22 was actually Wiglaf. It was right actually. Wiglaf is the right answer actually. Hmm. Wiglaf is a character that appeared in here is question number 23 now. The epic poem Beowulf who presents Beowulf with a sword called hunting and here he had actually earlier hmm, had a fight with Beowulf. Now trying to present a gift in the form of a sword and seeking forgiveness for his previous challenge each earlier he had a fight with Beowulf now seeking forgiveness for that fight now he is providing a sword called hunting here is Anfarth he is also known as Anfarth that is Anfaro C ok Anfarth or Anfaro or Hanfarth he is also known as Hanfarth yeah excellent space to be right actually Anfaro is the right answer here you see Anfaro who is a warrior is also known as Anfarth who had earlier challenged him presents Beol with his sword hunting and Anfaro is actually seeking forgiveness for his previous challenge okay for its previous challenge so i'll be ending the session here i i request everyone to join tomorrow's morning session i'll be informing in the telegram channel when i will be conducting the classes okay that's why i request you to join the telegram channel that is santu sahu ugc net and based on the syllabus of calcutta university i will be preparing some ppt some questions mock test for all of you so stay tuned and see you soon good night everyone tomorrow we are meeting in the morning session okay and apart from that calcutta university english literature mock test i also provide mock test series for for mock test series for uh, mock test series for UG Senate English Literature exam, Gujarat set, WB set, GATE exam, CUTPG exam, and other state state exam as well. Other state state exam as well. Good night, everyone. Ab Sujit Vipra Space Godot. Yeah, Vipra Sujit Space Godot. Sneha Barsha Orko. Everyone. Priyanka. <coughs> Thank you everyone. Good night.